Hello guys, Junior back again. Right, I'm going to do this again because I did this review la yesterday and I did record the audio for the L, so it's easier for me to just run through it again. So anyway, this is the uh, 40th anniversary collection, SNK, uh, for the PS4. Uh, this collection did previously come out on the um, Switch. Uh, it's got a collection of 25 games, I count, but I did year 26, so I don't know whether there's going to be a downloadable game for this, I don't know, because they did add a load of downloadable games to the Switch version, which actually are on the disc for this version, which is quite nice. So, say, this is a collection of SNK's previous arcade games before the Neo Geo. It isn't a complete collection, but it's a, a sort of snapshot of um, some of the best games they did before sort of running up to the Neo Geo. So we'll start this up. Um, you've got two options, you've got Arcade and Museum, and you've got Options. Options is pretty simple, it's pretty much Achievements, Credits and English, it's not really that much to it. Um, the Museum though is quite interesting, um, there's three different sections. Uh, the first section is uh, is pretty much all the games they did, all in date order and release order, I'm assuming. Uh, for all the games they did, all the way up to 1990, I think, but I believe. Uh, and when you click on these, you get really nice high-resolution original arcade artwork. And you get like a little sort of... Um, a t sort of explanation about the games and what's going on and more artwork and stuff so it is a nice like a museum tour i suppose and they run through the games and it tells you all of, it tells you all about sort of the games they released and uh, what they were doing at the time which is a really nice feature and i am going to actually read through all this i've read through the first two so far but i will sit down and read through more because it's quite interesting so that's quite a nice addition they've added uh, on the bonus features uh you've got original uh, snk advertising so you've got the original advertising sort of uh, leaflets that snk checked out back in the day which is really cool and you've got a couple of them on you. You've got behind the scenes, which includes some really nice concept art. Uh, you can see the lines on the line paper where they were drawn on. So you can see that these are scans of the original artwork, the original sort of um, prototype stuff. And then you've got newsletters. Okay, you click on these, you get really cool hand drawn stuff. And these look like, um, I don't know, it's like fanzines, I would say. It's like a fanzine, quite cool, or oh, in Japanese though, but you know, SNK is Japanese. And then you get some arcade guidebooks, which is uh, really nice. So you get a guidebook to your Athena and Psycho Soldier. Like I said, it may all be a bit Japanese, but there might be some, well, some cool artwork and stuff in there. So you get all that as well. And um, also in this collection, you get the ability to soundtracks. So if I click on that. So you can play the soundtracks from not all the games, but quite a few of them. So you got the soundtracks from Athena, you got Crystallis, or Crystallis, um, Guerrilla War, Code Warriors, you know, Psycho Soldier, all that type of stuff. So it's a really nice addition they've added to this. I'm pretty sure all this is on the uh, Switch version as well, to be honest, but... Um, so that's the museum, which is... I know you can play all these games on MAME, uh, pretty much perfect, but... I thought I'd support SNK and buy their collection because it's pretty nice and you don't get the museum part of MAME but um, it's pretty cool. So if I go right back up to the top, actually I'll show you the games as we'll go through. So you've got uh, World Wars, you've got Vanguard, you've got um, TNK Free or Tank Free, uh, Time Soldiers, uh, Street Smart, Suzuki vs Commander, uh, SAR or Search and Rescue, uh, Sega Soldier, um, Prehistoric Isle, POW or um, Prisoner of War, uh, Paddle Mania, um, was it Zuma Wars, um, Munch Mobile, Iron Tank, uh, Cardi Warriors 1, 2, and 3, Guerrilla War, Fantasy, Crystallis, uh, Chopper, Bermuda Triangle, Beastbusters, Athena, and Alpha Mission. All these games include a Reason Switch, so you can play the Japanese or the American or the Western versions. 
which is a really nice option. Uh, in options then, um, a lot of these games include some dip switches you would put on the arcade mode and include some of these games actually do have an invincibility uh, dip switch as well, which some arcade games like did, um, like the IRM games for instance, like I've got a Kung Fu Master uh, IRM board and that's got a dip switch for invincibility, same as like R-Type has it, it must have been something they were using for um, development. So you can do start area, so e each game has got its own set of options you can set. Uh, so we'll click into this version. Uh, a lot of the games that were released on the console got an arcade version and a console version, so you basically you can play both versions on you, which is quite a nice addition, I think. So you can play the NES version. A lot of these games were released on the NES, so you've got NES versions. So we'll play the arcade version. Uh, also, pretty much all the games have got a watch mode, which is um, pretty much a replay of this game all the way through, usually without losing their life, just a very nice replay. Uh, what's cool about the replay is that you can watch the replay. You Say you get to level four and you fancy you go that level yourself. You can take control of the replay and just start exactly where the replay left off, which is quite a cool little feature. So we'll start this up. What we'll do is here, I'll show you that each game has got uh, real-time saves and loads. You can pretty much save it any way you want and uh, load it back. Uh, you've got button configurations. Some of the shoot maps could do with an auto-fire button. Uh, some have got it, some haven't. This one doesn't have it. Uh, it could really do with an auto-fire button. I don't know why. You can usually set a button to it. I don't know why they've missed that out, but there you go. Um, you've got a screen, so basically if I show you this, you can go your normal how it starts off, like a pixel perfect type of screen mode, or, or sharp screen as they call it. You've got a, a full screen, which is what I tend to use at the moment, and you have a you have a widescreen mode, which just looks pretty awful, and I don't even know why they bother putting that in it. I know some people say I've got a widescreen, so I'm going to use it all, but well, it pretty much makes the games look like shit, so don't do it. They're 4.3 games and should be put in 4.3, otherwise they look like crap. So I'm going to go back to full screen. You've got filters. So this is the TV filter, which is scan lines, which is quite nice. But it does add a, like a, I don't know, it adds like a little bit of a, a, a slight sort of blurring effect on it. Obviously similar to TV. And I don't know if I like it, to be honest. Like I think I prefer the more sharper look to everything. Um... But it does a job. You've got a monitor refresh rate, uh, so which gives you really sort of dark scan lines and a slight blurred effect, which I don't particularly like that version. Uh, so I'm going to turn the filters off. You've got borders. Each game comes with its own cool artwork border, so you can pretty much turn that on and off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play uh, a game on each one of these games just to show you exactly what's actually on this um, collection. Uh, I'm not going to play a, a long game on each one because this video will be about six hours long otherwise. So here we go, I'll start this up. So this is um, ooh, the original Alpha Mission. I say this game, uh, they did a sequel to this game on the uh, Neo Geo system. Uh, it was pretty much the first Neo Geo game that I owned. Uh, the, the Neo Geo version is really nice looking. Uh, the idea of this game is you basically go through, you keep clicking the power-ups, which obviously update your uh, main weapons and your missiles. You shoot the missiles on the floor to unlock these little um, icons on the floor. And then you can pick up ship parts, like I just picked up there. And free ship parts allows you then, it makes a ship, and allows you then to use that ship. Each ship's got its own different firepower. And as you can see down the bottom, there's a lot of little um, boxes down the bottom, and that's the different ships you can fill up in there. And you can use those ships then to obviously defeat the bosses and various things like that. So I got three ships. So as soon as I get a chance to use one of these ships, I'll use it and show you. That's a very handy power up, that is. Got to get energy off before you can use these ships. I'll say I got it. Yeah, here we go. Uh, the ships don't last forever. Uh, you basically need to keep collecting the uh, E icons, which are the energy icons, uh, to keep a ship going. So um, 
Just keep collecting every icon you can, which will uh, keep the power up on your ship. Once the power's gone on the ship, you revert back to the standard ship. I say I've never really put a lot of time into the original version of this. I did play the uh, the Neo Geo sequel quite a bit, uh, but um, the original I haven't played much time in it. But it is pretty pretty good to be honest. It is a pretty nice game. I just wish they'd actually put a proper auto fire in this, because as fast as you fire without auto fire, or if you fire yourself, you can fight like that. So the NGs run up on my ship now. Come on, things. I knew I was going to be a little bit of a problem then with them flying around. You'd get a joystick, I suppose, with uh, auto fire, which would uh, help, or at least, at least you can button bash on a joystick. Quite nice. So yeah, all these games are arcade games, so they were all well, apart from uh, two of them, uh, they were all meant to be played on a joystick. So they don't play fine on a pad, mind. That one icon that uh, dead. So, that's Alpha Mission, the original. It's a pretty nice little shoot map, actually. Like I said, you've got the real-time saves and stuff as well. Uh, so I'll show them. Actually, I'll start it up and show you them. So basically, you can play the game, click it, you save. And it saves the game at that point. Okay. So carry on playing. And say you got up to you and you've died, you could go back uh, and load save. And you'll be back to where you were when you saved it. So very handy actually for killing certain bosses and stuff if you want to practice um, stuff in games. So, but shame there's not more than one save though. Let's just make sure. I don't think there's more than one save. Yeah, yeah. so there isn't. It would have been nice if there was like maybe six slots or something so you could use it for practicing. But anyway, so we'll quit this one. So that's Alpha Mission, right? You got the original Athena. Uh, the Athena character was in uh, another game called Psycho Soldier and plus he'd been in the King of Fighters games as well. This game was released on the NES and it's a pretty terrible conversion on the NES actually to be honest. But the arcade game is not particularly great and also very hard. So you've got Athena and you've got to fight your way, you can, um, there's some vertical levels, there's, there's, um, ooh. There's levels you go down as well, and you go horizontal all over the place, and you basically keep collecting your power-ups, and the bar on the right-hand side it tells you your, your weapon power, and you've got to make your way through it and fight bosses. Sounds easy, but this game is pretty hard. I have seen a replay of it, doing it on one life, but uh, that was a pretty good go, I would say. Once you get the helmet, you can crush you. Oh, there's the helmet. There's lots of power-ups everywhere in this game. This game is not the best play-in, to be honest. Like, the jump is well, is well tricky. So let's go down. Sometimes you want to jump really high, and every time you press it, it does that. Dead. Shouldn't have gone down it. By the way, I'm no good at this game at all. It's quite tricky. Some people consider Athena a bit of a classic, but uh, I thought it's not the best game in the world, to be honest. It's interesting, though. So I'm gonna st I'm gonna try and stay up the top of the level if I can. See, sometimes you, you press jump and it doesn't do it. It is a good idea to crush as many rocks as possible actually to get your power ups. Oh, damn, his power is terrible. Can't crush rocks when you've got this power up. It's handy. Don't 
don't think I want to go down there to be honest. I'm gonna try and stay along the top of the level. Oh, the potion doesn't doesn't look good. Ah, uh, arrow in the back of the head. So that's the scene, guys. It's I don't know. It's a bit of an odd game, and it's it's not particularly that great. Uh, Beastbusters next. This is a gun game. Um, I remember when this came out in the arcade. It's got a big free player cabinet with really nice artwork and stuff on it, and it was a really impressive arcade game at this time. And uh, I I remember seeing it and being really excited to play it. The version on you is is very very nice. It's exactly perfect, but it uses the analog stick as you can see here, and it's very very sensitive. Like literally, you don't hardly have to move it at all to get it to go there. So I wish there was a sensitivity option on you, but unfortunately there isn't. Didn't want to do that. Want to? Okay. You can get used to it, mind. But it would have been nice if there was a could sort of cut the sensitivity down a little bit, I think. So this is pretty much a, a zombie um, gun game. And I'm glad of one thing, though. They didn't keep the flash. Because in, in obviously gun games in the arcades, they flash all the time. I'm glad they cut the flash out, because uh, that would be very annoying. Oh, damn. Dogs are kicking my ass. Yeah, you fight bosses in here as well, zombie bosses and stuff. It's like a zombie version of sort of like um, Operation Wolf, I suppose. Obviously not on an army base, but... Sensitivity on a stick does take a little bit of getting used to. I could I gotta keep an eye out for the door so the parcel coming so uh, we'll have to pause it quickly if anything does have come to the door so you got yeah so basically you um shoot your way through the levels oh my energy's not good you also got a grenade as well which is quite nice you can pick up um like rock grenades and stuff as well uh damn I did get to the second level of continuing uh, yesterday. Obviously not doing so good this time. It's cool the way the zombies all sort of explode into sort of uh, blood and guts. Kill the jumping dogs. Yeah, I say the cabin in free players is quite cool cab. I haven't seen it any the cab anyway for this for quite a long time. Something that'd probably go down quite cool in, if they added an arcade club. Maybe he does have it. He does have a hell of a lot more stuff in arcade club, but he's actually on display. You can play so maybe he does have Beastbusters. Maybe next time I go up, I'll ask him if he's got it. There's a corridor leading down to the boss. Here we go. Damn. A werewolf. Into a crazy werewolf dog. Firing fireballs. At least I think of fireballs. Oh, die dog. 
bet you that. I'll show you the uh, second level there. Uh, that music reminds me of um, uh, what's it called Baseball Stars. The second level's here in the lift. So that's Beast Busters, guys. It's a pretty cool gun game. We do like that game. Bermuda Triangle. Uh, this is a shoot map. It's an odd shoot map, actually. I don't know quite what to make of this game, to be honest. It's very strange music. This is pretty much a shoot 'em up where it's in the arcade. It's got a dial controller, so basically you can t you can when you fire, you've got a secondary fire. Pretty much you can fire in any direction you want. So it's quite unique in that respects. You don't see many arcade games using a, a you know shoot 'em ups using a dial controller. SNK did make a few of them actually, but um, they did quite a few games with dial controllers. Um, like your Cardi Warrior games and um, ooh, ooh. and uh, what do you Gorilla War and stuff like that? You all use the dial controller. They're watching this as well. The big like flashy ball things that look like power ups are not actually power ups. I say there were some pretty excellent uh, dial controlled arcade games out there, with uh, Midnight Resistance being my favourite one of all of them, and probably uh, Forgotten Worlds is my second favourite. Good old Capcom. Even though uh, Midnight Resistance is not Capcom, it's Data East. I used to own the arcade board with that as well, but never could get hold of a dial controller, so I didn't keep it for too long. But, uh, I'm a bit of a fan of that game. So if you want a nice conversion of that game on a console, the Mega Drive conversion is very good. Yeah, it's weird in this game where you, you basically you start flying backwards on the level. Your ship is like massive as well, so it's it's like it's really difficult to dodge everything. It is quite an odd shoot 'em up. Obviously, SNK were trying something completely new with this game. I'd say there's another shoot 'em up on this pack with using a dial controller, and I, I think that one's better. I think the other one's actually pretty decent. Ronin, Ronin, energy power, power. My ship has got uh, shot quite a bit. I didn't realise this was actually a time travelling game. So, last bit moved to triangle. Bit of an odd shoot 'em up, but it seems alright. Chopper. This is another shoot 'em up by um, SNK. I say this this disc to me is it's a damn good collection, but it is missing two games for me. There's two other shoot 'em ups on you, which I hope they do with DLC. Is um, Sky Adventure and Sky Soldier. They're really cool, they are. But the non this collection is a little bit of a shame. So this one's a little bit like Tiger Heli. Maybe this is their answer to Tiger Heli, or Tiger Heli was their answer to this. I'm not sure the exact dates on both of those games when they got released in the arcade. So you've got a um, special weapon in this game as well. This game's pretty nice. There's some nice power-ups and stuff you get on you. There is an odd thing where there's certain enemies like a chuck a net down the screen, and the, and the, if you bump into it, the net covers your firing, and you've got to shoot your way out of the net, which is a bit unusual, I suppose. My first power-up. Yeah, it's a bit of an odd sort of enemy chucking a net at you when I shoot them up, but... Um,
You can bump into the walls of the canyons on this as well, so you've got to be careful of that. Like this beer, you can't get past it, it'll bump into it. It won't kill you, but um, it'll it'll sort of uh, stick you in place. There's the net, look. You get hit by that net, it sticks on the front of you until you shoot it off. I'll show you now, see? Can't shoot until I get this net off. Going to die, yeah. I'm not gonna hang around. Ah, uh, too low on the screen. Some terrible dodging. Missile's quite handy. So look, this is this one got a auto fire option? Yes, turbo fire. So this one has got a turbo fire option. Your specials kill that plane really damn fast. Yeah, I don't know why Alpha Mission doesn't have a uh, turbo fire option. So it's a pretty tricky game. It's pretty good though. So that's Chopper 1. Or is it Chopper 1? I don't know. I think it's probably just Chopper actually. Alright, Crystallis. Um, this is an NES game. I viewed it's supposed to be good. I've never played it myself. Um, it's supposed to be quite tricky as well, as far as I know. So I won't show you much of this because it's an adventure game and obviously these things take a long time to get into. Quite cool. It's just some, some alternative future, I think, or something in this game. Condition green. Input name. <laughs> so it might be a fun game. I hear a lot of people talking... Uh, Talking about it and saying good things about it, so. This is general adventure sort of um, gameplay. I think you get swords and stuff in there, and that's how you fight with swords, but yeah, obviously I'm gonna have to go and talk to everyone to get my swords. It's just gonna. Oh, there you go, there's a sword. Let's see if I can fight stuff, because you can go outside a bit. Here. Have you got to equip it? Uh, okay, maybe not. Ah, right. That's it. <laughs> so basically work your way around the world, obviously going in dungeons and stuff like that, and sort of kicking ass. Plays quite well, though. But I say we'll skip that, because it, it's going to take a long time to get into. So that's quite an interesting addition to this uh, pack. Uh, Fantasy, this is a really old arcade game. Very sort of those those uh, one screen arcade game. Well, it's got multiple screens on this, I suppose, but... How are you? I'm fine. How are you? Mm -hmm. I'm fine, thank you. The speech reminds me of um, Pole Position. Like, speech really back in the day, that arcade sort of weird, exaggerated speech. Right, it's, it's a bit strange, this game is. You've got to land on the pirate ship. It's trickier than it looks. I found if you wait for you, wait for you to fire again. Uh, we don't. Then you've got to save the girl. Oh. I'm not entirely sure, but it looks like he beats him to death with a giant blue dildo. I don't know why you would do that. And you can only attack on the... if you turn in sort of left and right. Damn. Let's see if I can get through this. 
Could be the worst way to go, that is, uh, beat to death by a blue dildo. Right, I haven't got, never got past the next screen. The next screen now is dodging. And you've got some crazy gorillas that are chucking coconuts for the look of it. Up in the air, and they, if they hit themselves on the head, they make a pretty crazy noise. Like this one will do. Like that. That's a very odd noise. I don't know how many of these you have to dodge. Switch <laughs> is quite funny, this game. <laughs> Looks like every second gorilla chucks a coconut on his head. <laughs> That's a strange gorilla noise. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen this in the arcades. Oh, the gorillas. Are the gorillas helping me? That's the question. Ooh. Help! Help! Oh, that was close. That's it. Gorilla killed himself. So, that's our game anyway. Oh, I don't want to save it. Oh well, don't know. So that's fantasy. Right then, now we're into the sort of dial-controlled arcade games. So we'll start with uh, Gorilla War. This was everywhere in the uh, arcades. All these Akari like, Warriors and that, they were all over the place in the arcades, everywhere you went. I do like the like painting drawings, supposed to be Che Guevara or something, and possibly that is, I'm not entirely sure. But these on twin sticks, work really well. You only got eight way controls though, so you haven't got um full analogue dis no controls but well, this is very like a Cardi Warriors. But obviously nicer graphics. He's sort of like a, a lone guy. Fire grenades. Ooh. You can fire faster as well if you tap the button. You can shoot the hostages as well, so you've got to be careful about that. The way they say help me sounds like the aliens were help me. Yeah, you've got to be careful not to shoot those hostages. You can get in tanks as well. Oh, I shot him. Poopy. I want to shoot this one. Yes, it. Ooh, I saved him. See, so yeah, this was a pretty interesting arcade game. Like I said, this was literally everywhere back in the day. Oh, you got run over. Dead. Help me. Very aliens. So that's Grilla War. It's a pretty decent game. Gonna take some a lot of practice to play it. Right, we're into the Kari Warrior games now. Kari Warrior uh, 2, I always thought it was the original Kari Warriors, but there you go. So you got both versions on your arcade and home. So this is the original classic arcade game that was converted to pretty much everything back in the day. The NES version is Probably a lot of people are going to be upset, but it's pretty crap. A lot of people love it, but it's it's a, it's it's very rough. I remember playing this back on the ST. Ooh. She used a grenade, actually. Oh, I couldn't control it then. Here we go, see how far we can get. Get a grenade in it. Get 
power up. Oh, I can't collect it. Oh damn, I've run out of bullets. Oh, I forgot in this game we've got bullets somewhere. It'll be uh, conservative if we get ammo, I forgot all about that. Or you could just fire away like a crazy man. Oh, am I gonna get. I need to get close to him. Oh, he's gonna get me. Uh, I forgot to conserve the ammo. So that's uh, Guerrilla War. That's an old classic, it says. So, we'll quit that one. Now we go to Guerrilla War 2. Oh, Victory Road. See, uh, this had a really nice um, arcade with that artwork. I think this used to be on like all the computer boxes and uh, back in the day, and uh, it always looked really nice. And it's on the arcade machine as well. The artwork's awesome. The speech is good in this. Come get me if you can. Say so this is a, another SNK classic. Like I said, I always thought this was the first game. It's like a fantasy version of uh, Akari Warriors. I, I, I like this one better. I don't know why, even though it is it is quite slow to be honest. I do think the artwork with the two guys with the swords is quite cool. Nice. You've got different weapons than that you can pick up in this as well. Can do in this as well. Pick up a sword. I right. could have picked up a sword. Come on, let's fight. So it's quite an interesting twist to the Cardio Warrior games. Second game. You can go fighting bosses if you go inside there. Actually, no, that's a power suit. I want to get that. Jump in here. I could probably take an extra hit with this thing. Ah, oh, like a hip left flying thing. Let's get down the hole. I think this is where the first either boss or sub boss is. Say this pretty much got converted, that was a good start wasn't it? Uh, this pretty much got converted to almost everything back in the day as well. Ah, dead. So that is uh, Akadi Warriors 2. It's a pretty interesting game as well, nice dial control game. So Akadi Warriors 3 next. This is a slightly different take on it, it's more like um, a beat em up. But with a dial controller from top top down. This was all over the place, this game as well. So busy. Backhand. You can pick up weapons and stuff in this game as well, knives and that. Basically, just take them on Rambo style. You got an odd effect here when you get out, just like you've got a. like you sunk in the land. Kick their asses. Get away from them. Explosions are big in this game. Bigger than they first look. Um. Oh, 
Yeah, so it's pretty much like a scroll on beat em up version, but it, it did use a dial controller as well, the arcade. Damn, they, they are those guys are. Come on. Uh, come on, get out. I wonder if this one has got an auto fire. Punch, kick, jump. Oh, I didn't realise you could jump. So that's um, Akari Warriors 3. It's quite an interesting little game as well. So now we're going into IN Tank. And I'm pretty sure this is an NES game. Yeah, it is. I think this is the NES version of Tank 3, I think. I'm not entirely sure now, I mind. So you got your tank. This one's obviously not a Dell controller because um, Nest didn't have that. You see a tank and you can fire your, your main shot. You just gotta work your way through the levels, picking up power ups, killing guys. You have got an energy bar. You can run over them, which is quite cool. So, have that. Never actually played this on the NES either, so. Seems quite decent though. So, take the big tanks out. Oh, thanks. Okay, cool. Some facts are saving you, maybe? Yeah, seems quite a cool game as well. Work your way through in your tank warfare. Can you go back on yourself? No, you can't. Okay. Jeez, they're a bit crazy. So quite a decent uh, NES game. Big explosions. Right, so that's Tank. Invasion of Normandy. Right, Mobile Munch. I don't get this game. You basically, you drive a car you drive it up and you use a giant hand to pick up items on the side of the road. Which is odd. And it's bloody solid to pick anything up. Get your little hand, you sort of extend it out. It's solid to pick anything up. It's really difficult. It just seems to go through everything. Like that. The collision detection on the hand itself in this game, it, it, it's, it's awful. See? Oh, I got it. Oh, hang on, hang on, am I just playing it wrong? Have you got to extend out and pull it in? Ah, no, that's me. Oh, yeah. you got to extend it out, grab it, and pull it back in. Right. Okay, I got it. That's me being silly. But still, an odd game. I got it. It's a bit of a strange idea for a game, to be honest. You also got to dodge as well at the same time. Yeah, that's a very strange arcade game, man. I've never ever seen that. I saw this mobile munch anyway. So, um, Zuma Wars. Zuma Wars. Right, do apologize in the start in the start guy. This this. But yeah, uh, this game has got very loud sound sound effects. It's literally shooting them up. A very old shooting them up. But it's got crazy sound effects as you hear in a minute. I think as well on this. It it play it does play quite well actually. And I think the ship from this, that ship there is the one from um, Alpha Mission, I'm sure it is. It looks like it anyway. Well exactly. I haven't played this much at the moment because like I said the sound effects are a little bit crazy. 
So we'll cancel that because it's probably doing everyone's head in. But yeah, it, it seems it's very old, a very old game, but uh, 1979 as well. It's an extremely old game, but it's quite playable actually. So Paddle Mania is the next one. This is quite strange. This is pretty much a pong game, but it's sort of like a tennis thing with a um, ping pong sort of bat, it looks like. And you control the character, and it, it must have obviously had like a dial controller again. I don't know, because I've never seen the arcade, but... And you, you basically, you push left and right on the uh, analog stick to turn your bat. It does play alright actually, this does. Yeah, I score a point then. <sighs> like I say, it's a bit fast, it's a bit crazy. It does it a bit, push in the opposite direction as well, to like swing it. Oh, nice point. Might be fun in two player, mind. Yeah, so it's a pretty odd game. Ah, hit me. No! Like an early sort of wind jammers. <laughs> no, no, we're in the last minute as well. Let's get into that then. Yeah, so that's Paddle Mania. Right, now on to uh, POW or Prisoner of War. So both versions are on here as well. I used to own the arcade game of this myself back in the day. It's a very difficult scroll along beat em up, but it can be done in one life because I've seen it. But you really gotta take your time and be really good with the uh, weapons and stuff if you wanna do it on one life. Oh, damn. The air kick is really powerful. You can pick up weapons in this as well, guns and knives. Uh, the machine gun's really powerful. I think uh, when I decided for a while, I swapped it for turtles. So that's Prisoner of War, guys. Scroll along, people. Very hard. Pretty fun game, though. It's good. But it's, it's a difficult one. Um, now we come to my favourite game on the collection, which is uh, Prehistoric Isle. So uh, never got released on anything. That's uh, another game that I did uh, I did on the arcade board back in the day. Unfortunately, with the arcade one of this, it's in a small screen. So um, you, are, you need an arcade monitor to stretch the screen out to full. But unfortunately I didn't know super gun, so I ended up with a square inside the screen, but um, there is a sequel to this on the Neo Geo, um, Prehistoric Isle 2, funny enough, and um, it's done in sort of like a rendered graphic style, which at first I didn't like the game, but um, the more I play it, I really like the second game as well now, and this one does have an autofire option. So you go, you buy plane. Uh, you're basically flying through a prehistoric sort of uh, island and you're shooting all the dinosaurs as you go. Uh, you can pick up points and stuff as well, plus you can pick up this power icon by here, which you can rotate around your ship and it gives you different firing depending on the position it's in. And you will need this because those uh, those little cavemen that come up from the bottom, they'll jump on your ship and grab hold you and then try and sort of force you down to the ground to kill you. 
Yeah, I'm a big fan of this game. I used to play this game a lot in the arcades. That's why I managed to get all of the arcade board years ago. Do do. You die there. Right, so I want to position it forward there, and I want to get it up at an angle there you now for the next lap. It's got pretty cool music in this game as well. I have managed to uh, one CC this game. I used to be able to do it when I owned the arcade board. Not easy, mind. He died then. I say you all will take uh, a couple of hits. But it, you, it does get blown up though, so you, you can't continuously just tank all the hits. Ah, uh, so we could pick the power up in. Yeah, this thing powered up even more. Right, and first boss coming up. Bosses in this game as well are all giant dinosaurs. This first boss is quite easy. But saying that, I'll probably die. Basically, when he stops, you've got to dodge. Dodge. He's dead. I think there's six levels to this game from what I remember. The last boss is very difficult as well. Very tricky. This is pretty much full power. It's quite cool that the water pushes you down. Here we go. The main boss, though. The Allosaurus. This guy's a bit tricky. He jumps up and kills you. He runs at you. He'll run at me now. Go up. And over. And then he'll do the same again. He's dead. So this is uh, definitely my favourite game on this pack. Probably the game I bought before, actually, because I really do love this game. But anyway, that is uh, Prehistoric Isle. That is a really cool shooter. Really like Prehistoric Isle. So on to um, Psycho Soldier now. Uh, this is uh, quite a unique... Well, I wouldn't say unique, because um, Capcom did release Son Son in the arcades, and, and I'm sure Son Son is before this. So this, I suppose, is a bit of a copy of that. We got the Psycho Soldier characters. Here we go. And um, you basically go through these uh, four different sort of levels. Uh, keep shooting and collecting weapons. And you get us singing as well, which is quite cool. Seems quite an interesting game, this does. I think I'm going to play this for a bit. There is no jump button either. There's literally just pu you push up and down. Oh, as I got it. Do, 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 do. This song, they redid this song quite a few times in the um, Neo Geo. On the King of Fighters games. Son Son is very uh, similar to this, the Capcom game. Ooh, 
Gotta watch out, I don't wanna get by. I don't think it actually kills you though, so I'm not sure if it knocks your weapon power down or something. I haven't quite worked that out yet. But this is, I don't know, it's quite an interesting game. It's just I, I quite like this one. I'm going to give this one a bit more, a bit more of a try. Like, can jump in these bits as well. Oh, dead. Athena, I will go. So Athena obviously is Athena from the original Athena arcade game. But now she's got a schoolgirl uniform on. Psycho Soldier. I'm eating it in as well. Psycho Soldier. So, that's Psycho Soldier. That's pretty good. But then, Search and Rescue. This is one I've played in the arcades quite a few times. This is another DAL controlled arcade game with the 8 week and the uh, firing. But this is a really nice looking one. It's pretty much an Aliens uh, game with uh, lots of blood and gore. This is one of the other games I, I wanted this collection for. Doo -doo. Hope those guys had parachutes on. I can't skip any of this either. So it's quite a nice game, it says. It's got uh, nice graphics. Everything blows up and sort of explodes into sort of blood and gore. giant mechs. You do fight proper aliens and stuff in this as well. Some nice animation on this game. There's an alien. First in. Ooh. It's quite a cool game, this is. The alien was just about to burst out there, man. Do have a sort of a dodge? I forgot about that. Can't dodge through stuff. Damn! Should just jump through it like that, really, shouldn't I? Oh damn! I didn't see that enemy in. That's just me playing fast. But anyway, that's Search and Rescue, which is pretty cool as well. I quite like Search and Rescue. Suzuki and Commander. I've actually played the arcade one, this as well. This is a Space Invader slash Galaxian clone with uh, a guy shooting the flying ninjas. It's old, but it is quite playable. You've got to dodge the ninja bodies flying from uh, falling down from the air when you shoot them as well, because they do kill you. Pretty sure you've got this at Arcade Club. Ooh. The sound effects look like they were ripped from uh, Gallagher, didn't they? Or sound like they were ripped from Gallagher. Come on. different ninjas now. Yeah, so basically you just do this. I don't know whether the backgrounds change. They might do. So that's uh, Suzuki Commander. 
Not a huge amount to say, but that seems alright. Street Smart. This is a, another game that was basically everywhere back in the day as well. It's um, beat em up with. Uh, you may recognise the tune from this if you've played um, the original Fatal Fury. This is the Boxers uh, level tune. It's uh, not off his SKs when they first beat them up, they did. Dun, dun. Um. This game's a little bit weird because when you press the button, you automatically move forward. This game's like a. Okay. You got. No. You got a little bit of a rhythm to this game. Sorry, guys, I was just answering some questions. Then. It takes a little bit of a rhythm to this game to play it, but. Um, once you get the rhythm, you can beat it. It can be beaten on one life as well, but it is extremely difficult. Oh. So you can go up and down as well. Come on. Oh, he's kicking my ass. Turn around. Hey, hey, he's dead. Oh, taking the hospital anyway. <laughs> so it's a second guy who's extremely hard. That's it, that's me dead. So that's Street Smart. Um, doesn't play that great these days, but um, it's still a little fun game. You will have to continue a lot. Like one of the other games I was looking forward to on this pack is uh, Time Soldiers. I don't know why, but I always thought this was a Sega game. But it obviously isn't. This is another dial controller game, but you've got these like warriors that go through time, uh, fight bosses and stuff. This is quite a nice arcade game. I do quite like this game. Oops. That was a good start, wasn't it? I need longer fire. You do get a sub weapon in this now we've picked up, does that, which is quite handy. I'm going to have to continue now because it's plain terrible. <laughs> so, quite a tricky game, but um, it's, it's good. Obviously, it's very sort of like commando ish with the way the, the firing after a certain length disappears. Come on. He's down. So if you go through these, ah, oh, I tried to get in there without them firing at me. Then if you go through them, you travel in time. And there's different bosses. You tie to the past. You you travel time, travel to the future. There's a pretty nice version of this on the mass system. Obviously, graphically, it's not as good as the arcade, but um, I've always quite liked the Mass System version. You know, the Mass System didn't have a dial controller, but um, you sort of just the direction you push. Ah, oh, I thought I'd get around that then. The direction you push is um, the direction you fires. So, yeah, Time Soldiers. Like I said, really out of practice and hard, but I do like Time Soldiers. Uh, tank Free, no?
This one, which is what I pretty much think Tank is a, maybe a sequel to, I'm not entirely sure on the NES. So, you got your Tank, comes out pretty much just like the NES version really, but this one's got the dial controller so you can be shooting eight directions. No music, which is a bit strange. I'm sure the NES game is this, because it, it, it's almost got the same layout as well. That's it. Ooh. They are very tiny planes. <laughs> <laughs> really tiny planes. Oh, this weapon's awesome. Super fast firing version is brilliant. So basically, just work your way around the map, shooting stuff, killing things, blowing up tanks. Get through the game, basically. Basically, like so. so. I've never actually seen this game in the arcades. But it seems alright. Could have done with a bit of music, though. Oh, blown up. Cool. So that's tank free. Coming down to the last two games, though. So, Vanguard. They've got this in Arcade Club. I was uh, playing it last time I went up there. This is like um, a scramble, but you can shoot in four directions and you can fly into a, an item and pick the shit up. So you can... It's a very scramble-esque. I'm not sure if you can shoot the back ones, no. But you can jump that NG thing and you can pretty much crash into the enemies. The cab he's got in an arcade club, it's got a really nice screen on it as well, so it looks really sort of like nice sort of clear high res. Oh, I'm brilliant. You can crash into the background as well and take him out for extra points. Oh no, don't get extra points. Ah, there you go, dead. Is it crash into it? Yeah, so it's not bad as a game, it's an old one. But, um, it's pretty decent. So that's Vanguard. Right then, on to the last game of this list is uh, World Wars. This is another game that uses the dial controllers and it's a shoot 'em up. Like um, the one at the top of the list we did. Uh, but I quite like this one. This one's quite it's quite good, so you can fire in all eight directions. But if you keep the firing on forward quite a lot, you can get away with killing most things. And it just plays like a normal shoot 'em up. It's quite a decent game, it says. You only go there on the screen now, so you've got to be careful that I can't fly right to the top. Don't know what the energy for it is for yet, I haven't quite worked that out. Ah, right, it's the weapon energy. You can get some nice big sort of chunky weapons on this as well. Can I get the next weapon up? Here we go. This weapon kicks ass. Yeah, so it's, it's actually a pretty decent little game. It's just I quite like this. See if I can get right up to the top. Is it one more I've got to I've got to do to get full energy? Oh, that is full energy. 
So that's full weapon. Do do do. You see, like the distance closing down on the top. That's the distance to the boss. Ah, dead. So, guys, that is. Ooh, put out to that. That is World Wars. So that's all the games on this list, so we'll count them. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 25 games on this, uh, on this compilation. I did hear there was 26. So this, this compilation, basically, um, you've got all the Switch games. The games are released on the Switch on the cartridge, plus all the downloadable extras, which were free, are all actually on this disc, like Beast Busters and stuff was uh, an extra download. Um, but I have heard there's 26 games going to be coming out for this, so I don't know whether they've just counted it wrong or they do plan a downloadable extra game. So I don't know. But I say this compilation is out next week on the 22nd of uh, March. I was lucky enough to have it a week early. That's why I'm checking this review out early. What I would say is, I, I, I'm a big fan of SNK. I do like their old games. I love the Neo Geo. And I, if you want a collection of old arcade games and you fancy a go of, uh, this is a pretty nice collection. Even though I think the Scanline options could have been a little bit better. I, I wish they didn't put that slight blue to the Scanlines. Um, because I'd use the scan lane option of voice. Um, but yeah, it's a nice little collection. It's got some good games on here. It's got some very old arcade games, but it's got some uh, classics on here, like Prehistoric Isle and Search and Rescue and, and some of the, the Kari Warriors games and stuff, which is pretty cool. So, so you get 25 games. It's a pretty nice collection. Um, I'm going to give it 8 out of 10. If you like old arcade games, definitely pick this up um, support SNK uh, this is a physical release as well so it's not just a downloadable uh, game you can actually get it on disc and or if you just want to try some of these games out of curiosity pick it up currently it is retailing I think for $29.99 or 32 I'm not entirely sure but I've been looking around the internet. If you look around on pre-orders at the moment, some of them are offering this for 26 quid, which is a bargain for 26 quid. That's pretty much just over a pound a game. So can't argue with that. You'd probably spend more than that if you were playing them in the arcades, which most of them you'll never find in the arcades anymore. So it's quite a nice uh, collection. And the the sort of museum section is nice as well. So. All right, and guys, we'll call it uh, a day and that. Hope you like the review, and um, I'll be back next week with something not special, but I, it's, it'll be um, a second part of one of the compilation of games I did. So i got to be busy recording that and getting that going. So I'll see you soon, guys. Ta-da!